हेलो स्टूडेंट्स लेट्स डिस्कस सम प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ ए कॉन्गोरेंट बी मॉड्यूलो एन एंड वंस यू आर डन विद दिस प्रॉपर्टी यू विल बी एबल टू हैंडल द क्वेश्चंस ऑफ दिस थ्री टाइप्स एंड दिस प्रॉपर्टीज विल बी यूज्ड फर्दर इन सॉल्विंग क्वेश्चंस एंड लीनियर कॉन्गोरेंस आल्सो सो द टाइप वन इज व्हेन यू हैव टू फाइंड आउट द रिमाइंडर इन सच केसेस लाइक दिस टाइप टू व्हेन यू हैव टू फाइंड आउट द रिमाइंडर इन दिस केसेस एंड द लास्ट डिजिट ऑफ when a number is raised to certain power so these type of questions are very important for exam point of view as well as for placement when you prepare for the competitions so now let us discuss about the properties of a congruent b modulo n now let us see the first basic property the first basic property is that a congruent b modulo n is an equivalence relation you might have heard this name in functions and relation in grade 12 now if i'm saying it is a equivalence relation means first thing it is your reflexive second thing it is symmetric and c is it is transitive reflexive means a congruent a mod n symmetric means if a congruent b mod n then b congruent a mod n which we made very clear while doing the definition transitive means a congruent b mod n and b congruent c mod n implies a congruent c mod n so if these three properties are satisfied it is called the equivalence relation we don't have to do the proof right now we'll just understand the properties the second important property is if suppose i am giving you a congruent b mod n or better let me write it a1 and b1 same way a2 congruent b2 mod n then i can write a1 plus a2 congruent b1 plus b2 mod n same way i can write a1 minus a2 congruent b1 minus b2 mod n also i can write a1 a2 congruent b1 b2 mod n so this property will be utilized while doing the question where i will have two congruencies i can add them i can subtract them as well as i can multiply them this will be very useful while doing the questions the next property says that if px is any polynomial if px is any polynomial and it is given that a congruent b mod n then p of a congruent p of b mod n this i won't be using much but yes it is a property when you will study polynomials that time it will be required okay now the second next thing is fourth property is if a is congruent to b mod n okay then gcd gcd of a comma n is equal to gcd of b comma n gcd is nothing but hcf highest common factor so that i will teach you how to find out so this is another property now other property is that if suppose a congruent b mod n okay and suppose there is some number m which divides n in that case you can also write a congruent b mod n for example if i write 39 congruent 3 mod 12 Now four divide twelve. That is m, right? So I can also write thirty nine congruent three mod four. Also I can write mod six mod three. All I can write because that numbers are dividing four, so I can write like that. The next property is if you have a congruent b mod m and a congruent b mod n. Suppose you have these two. also given that gcd of m comma n is 
then I can write E congruent B mod MN. Simple example, 16 congruent 1 mod 3, 16 congruent 1 mod 5. Now, GCD of 3 and 5 is 1. HCF of 3 and 5 is 1. Right? They are co-primes. So, I can write 16 congruent 1 mod of 15. Right? Now, next property is very important. Next two properties are very important where you can do little mistakes sometime in hurry. So, please understand. If you have A congruent B mod N. Okay? So, you can write CA congruent CB mod CM mod CN. Right? Now, the eighth property is if AB congruent AC mod M. Now, please understand here very carefully. Simply, you cannot write B congruent C. You can't think I will cancel A. Yes, I can write B congruent C mod M if GCD of A comma M is equal to 1. So, please take care of this thing while doing the question. Simply don't divide if they have the common multiple. You have to check the GCD of A and M. Means this number and this number should be co-prime then only you can. Also, the ninth property is A congruent B mod M is there suppose and if suppose D is the GCD of A comma M right then I can write A by D congruent B by D mod M by D. Right? So, while doing the questions, if you have the big numbers, then always use these properties to reduce it to the smaller numbers. For example, if I am giving a big number, you check the uh, GCD, GCD of A and M. And then divide all the three numbers by GC. This is how we will use the property. So, usually students get confused in property 8 and 9 while doing the questions. So, that we have to take care. Now, throughout I was using the word GCD. So, I will be teaching you finding out GCD in another video. Before that, let us target our questions. As I said, we will be solving this. If I am asking, find the remainder. When 2 to the power 50 is divided by 7. Now, please recall the definition. What is the definition of A congruent B modulo N? I told you this means A N divides A minus B. And also I said, he, if I divide this A by N, if you divide this A by N, then B is the remainder. So, now something division is happening here. So, I am asking you remainder. So, basically what I am asking if this is congruent, where is the remainder placed always here? So, I am asking you this and here what is written? 2 to the power 50 and I am dividing it by what? I am dividing it by 7. So, mod 7. So, this is my question. Understood? When I am saying find the remainder when 2 to the power 50 is divided by 7, this is how I should write the question. And now, what you have to do? You need to figure out the value of x so that 7 divides 2 to the power 50 minus x. Now, what is the problem here? Problem here is that 2 to the power 50 is a huge number. Now, when 2 to the power 50 is a huge number, I need to split it into small numbers and then I have to apply the properties. So, most of the time, I will be using the exponent properties. Now, let us see quickly. Let me try to split 2 to the power 50. Now, 2 to the power 50, first let me start with 2 to the power 5. Can I write like this? I want to reach to 50, so I am starting with 2 to the power 5. Right? Now, 2 to the power 5, I wrote like this. What is 2 to the power 5? 32. Congruent x mod 7. Right? Now, I should think like this. I need to talk about the table of 7. 7 ones are 14, 21. 28, okay, 28, then 35, and it goes on like this, right? So, now, near to 32, what is the number? Near to 32, 
I should subtract something from here, okay? Because definition says A minus B. I can reach to 28. So, how far I am from 28? 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. Four steps. I am away from 28. So, I will write it. Now, tell me, is this working now? 32 minus 4 is 28 divisible by 7. So, I am done. So, I can write that 2 to the power 5 is congruent 4 modulo 7. Correct? But I am at 2 to the power 5. I want to reach to 2 to the power 50. So, can I square both the sides? So, I am using the property that A congruent B mod N can be written as A to the power K congruent B to the power K mod N. This is one property we skipped over there. So, please note down this property as well as in your properties. So, now 2 to the power 10 congruent 16 mod 7. Correct. Now, as I said, this number is big. I want to make it a small number. If you remember, I told you the method to reduce it. Reduce it means 16 congruent x mod 7. So, think about table of 7. I want to go near 16, right? I want to make 14 here. So, I should write here 2. So, 16 congruent 2 mod 7 I can write. Right? So, I can replace this by 2. Now, I reach to 2 to the power 10. I should reach to 50. So, how I can reach to 50? If I raise it to the power 5. So, this will be 2 to the power 50 is equal to 2 to the power 5 mod 7. Both the side I raise to the power 5. Now, 2 to the power 50 congruent. Now, here 2 to the power 5 is what? 2 to the power 5 is nothing but 32 mod 7. Again, 32 is a big number. So, I will use the same concept and I will reduce. So, 32 congruent x mod 7. Right? So, what I should put in place of x? I want to go to 28. Before 32, 28 is in table of 7. So, I will write 4. So, 2 to the power 50 congruent 4 mod 7. So, my answer is since I reached here, I can say when 2 to the power 50 is divided by 7, then the remainder will be 4. So, this is how we do the question. We will do few more questions in the next video. Thank you.